Judd's melancholy vocal soared out of the windows of my grandpa's pickup and through the dry blades of grass that make up much of the vegetation of the Sierra Nevada foothills. My grandpa and I made the trip quite often, every other weekend or so, throughout most of my childhood. The waves in the road always gave me a roller coaster sensation in my guts that I loved. And once we got to Canyon Fork Shopping Center, the heart of Prather, I knew we'd soon be turning onto the road he and my grandmother lived on. Rock Hill Lane. Rock Hill Lane wasn't paved, and still isn't to this day. My grandpa, or Pa as I called him, always made the right turn onto the road very slowly. If a driver was coming in the opposite direction, he would lift three fingers from his left hand off the wheel in a friendly gesture. He knew where all the dips were and when to swerve, and oftentimes he hit the bumps hard on purpose if we were in the bed of the pickup just to make it a little fun. My grandparents lived in a huge double-wide mobile home on their acres of land. To me, though, it felt like a magical castle. Every time I'd walk inside, my grandma, or Ma as I called her, always had a snack waiting for me. Usually Fritos and a Coke. I'd sit at their huge dining room table and eat my snacks while watching whatever they had playing on the TV in the living room. Speaking of the living room, it was perfectly laid out, with three recliners, a couch, and a love seat. Spread out so perfectly, there was plenty of room for us kids to play on the floor. Family photos were spread throughout the walls with old-timey tchotchkes and knickknacks scattered around. I always admired the giant gold watch-looking picture frame that had their photo inside. You could often find me playing with their old memorabilia. They had an ancient phone like you'd see on reruns of Lassie. I'd often pretend to be June Lockhart, calling the operator to yam about my son, Timmy. They also had an old butter churn, and I'd act like Laura Ingalls, do my best little house rendition. My imagination roamed wild there, and nothing felt off limits. During mealtimes, we kids usually would have to sit at the breakfast nook, or the trough as it was known. It wasn't until I was a preteen that I found out what a real trough was, and I felt halfway offended. But it honestly made sense with how we kids ate. I was grateful they kept kid-friendly food around. My ma's favorite snack was saltines crumbled into a glass of buttermilk, and the smell used to make me gag. Giving me Oreos and milk kept me satisfied. Their bedroom was always my favorite room. They had an attached bathroom with a giant walk-in tub. You didn't have to argue with me to take a bath when I was there. As soon as my grandma said it was time, I'd grab my favorite toys and be off on an adventure. I'd brush my teeth at their sink quite often and always marveled that Pa used blue mouthwash while Ma used green. I never knew why they couldn't compromise on a flavor, but I always loved having a choice. The guest bedroom felt lonely. While I spent most of my nights in this room, it always felt different from the rest of the house. Like it didn't fit. Every morning when I woke up, I'd race to sit on the heating vent out in the dining room, as I'd want it out of that room as soon as I could. It was meant for sleeping and nothing more. While they had a modern washer and dryer, they only used the washer. 
Pa would always take the fresh wash and hang it out on a clothing line outside. As a kid, I remember him once attempting to come back in with the wicker clothes hamper full of dry clothes. Except Ladybird's litter of puppies were crowding his every step. She had given birth under the steps of the porch, and the pups were obsessed with him. There was a giant tree that the propane tank sat under. It was the only tree my timid ass ever felt comfortable scaling. I could safely drop to the ground from a long branch that hovered close to the earth. The opposite side of the property had a huge satellite dish that looked like a UFO. One of my first memories in life is staring out the window as Pa and my dad constructed it. The front of the trailer was a Joshua tree they planted when my cousin Josh was born. The woodpeckers were obsessed with this tree and it wasn't uncommon to hear them hamming away at the bark. Right next to the driveway was a hardly used swing set that was constructed when my older cousins were young. Their property was connected to my cousin Deneen's by a small trail. You'd often see someone in my family traversing to and fro between the two houses. Across the lane lived Mrs. Juanita Riggs. You couldn't see her house from the road, but you could see her giant green water tank. She would often come over to exchange pleasantries and collect old newspapers from my grandparents. I'd visit her from time to time, as she always seemed lonely. We'd often walk up and down Rock Hill Lane. Pa and I would play Cowboys and Outlaws, or Power Rangers, or hunt quail with BB gun. The neighbors were extremely friendly, and the road had a real Mayberry vibe. It didn't feel like it was smack in the middle of California, it felt like it was 1940s Alabama, but without all the racism. The community was full of love. When my grandparents decided to move to New Mexico, they sold the property to my Aunt Sheila, who built a house and lived there for many years before deciding to sell it for good. While I'd visit my aunt there from time to time, it never had the same magic that the double white provided. But it still made me feel at home. We even held my mom's memorial service right where the old satellite dish used to sit. After almost two decades of not seeing the lane, my cousins and I decided to take a trip through our childhood. Nothing had changed except for some newer houses. Every dip, swerve, and bump was a jolt of nostalgia. The giant rock that reads, Jesus loves you. The big green water tank. The Joshua tree mom and pa planted on their property. All still there. Unchanged. Like they're stuck in a time loop. My childhood was always chaotic, but Rock Hill Lane was home base. It was where I could call Ollie Ollie Oxen Free, and life would let me take a breather. Every holiday where my family was all there and surrounded by love is a cozy nook in my brain that reminds me of where I come from. I didn't need cable. I didn't need friends. I just needed fresh mountain air and my grandparents. And I was safe. <laughs>